Welcome, welcome, one and all. Today I'll be doing a quick tutorial on how to build a character using D&D Beyond. First thing you'll do is you'll click on the URL that has been provided to you by your DM. You can either copy and paste that into a web browser on your phone, tablet, smart device, computer, and it'll bring you to this page here. You can click on one of the characters that you currently already have and click join, scroll down and click join with this character, or you can simply do what we're going to do today and go to create a character. That page will load up and you will see this page here. What you'll do, you can click on randomize and come up with a brand new name today. I'm going to be named my character Glade. Uh, you'll click on profile picture and it'll give you a bunch of different options for profile pictures. Um, me, I know I'm just going to go ahead and choose a file from my desktop and I'm going to pick that profile picture. <clears throat> Once my profile picture loads up, I can move down the page set portrait and I can enable all source content. Uh, all, the so all the source content that your DM has graciously provided to you will now be uh, available to you to access uh, as long as campaign sharing is enabled. I'm also going to activate optional features such as optional class features and customize your origin. Everything else on this page will stay the same. You you'll be, we'll be using hip fixed hit points uh, as well as a milestone advancement type prerequisites for all the multi-classing and coins and whatnot. Alright, moving on from there, the next step is to choose your character's race. There's a lot of different options ranging from uh, things as exotic as like uh, a tabaxi, which is like a half cat person. Uh, you, you have the shifter race again, which is like one of those uh, uh, you know, races that like basically you can be like half animal uh, minotaurs and Leonins and uh, changelings, which are these shapeshifters. But today we're going to keep it simple. Uh, not going to do human or elf, not that simple. But we're going to go with one of the most basic DD uh, races there is the half elf. Uh, half elves are combined to say what is the best qualities of both elf and human parents. Uh, they have a plus two in charisma, a plus one to two other ability scores. They also have dark vision, fey ancestry, and skill versatility. So I'm going to go ahead and choose my race. Uh, first things first on the race page, now that we've enabled optional features, we're going to go to Origin Manager. Origin Manager, we're going to click on Origin Ability Score Increase. Uh, I'm not going to change the language. I think Elven and Common are pretty good languages to have off the bat. Uh, racial Traits. Let's go ahead and pick... Uh, since I since normally they would just give you charisma and then you'd have a plus two to two other stats, but in this case I'm gonna go ahead and be giving my character uh, a plus two in dexterity, and then we'll give one to charisma and one to uh, wisdom. Uh, what we have here is we have the option for skill versatility I'm gonna say my character is an athlete so he's gonna be good at athlete uh, athletics he's also gonna be pretty intimidating he likes to you know scare off his opponents if he can uh, languages I've already got common and elven so uh, let's say my character you know he probably has uh, let's say he has some uh, some friends who are Draconic, so he's going to go ahead and take Draconic as one of his languages. Alright, with that, I can now jump into my class. The class is obviously, this is like your bread and butter of your decisions here to make today. So today I'm going to keep it simple. Today we're going to be a fighter. Uh, fighter is one of those classes where if you're new to D&D, it's basically like you're on your turns, go ahead and hit something. You're not going to, you know, you're, you're contributing um, to, the, to the combat one way or another. Also, fighter is one of those classes where if you start off as a fighter just to get used to the mechanics and then you want to keep the same character and then move into multi-classing any other classes, almost any class can benefit from having at least one level in fighter. Uh, and that's because at, at first level you gain proficiency in a bunch of different armors and weapons, as well as 
as you gain uh, the second wind feature, which is like uh, an ability that like, allows you to uh, recover health uh, once every short rest. So I'm going to go ahead and take fighter. My proficiencies as a fighter are going to be in acrobatics, and uh, I'll also have some experience in animal handling. I'm going to pick the fighting style uh, for... Uh, actually, before I pick my fighting style, I'm going to talk about optional features for fighters. Uh, you can do fighting style options, add these, that also give you blind fighting, interception, spirit technique, thrown weapon fighting, unarmed fighting, and then I'm also going to go ahead and uh, take this martial versatility, which will allow me to change out my fighting style at 4th level if I decide to get to 4th level in this class. So I'm going to go ahead and make my character a unarmed fighter. Okay. Uh, he's going to already have second wind. Um, uh, at first level, you will have whatever you, the, the max is on your hit point die, which is 10, but we have it set to fixed hit points, so it will automatically adjust my hit points at every level. We won't have to worry about that. All right, next up is my abilities. So there's a few different methods to choosing getting your ability scores. The first is standard array. Standard array will give you an 8, a 10, a 12, a 13, a 14, and a 15 to choose from. You can apply those to whichever stat you choose. You want one of, one of each of these numbers to each one of your six core stats. Um, you can also do the point by system. Point by system is going to give you 27 points, and you can distribute them as much as you would like. Um, till you spend all 27 of your points. Next is the manual rolled method, which is the method that I prefer. Uh, and you'll go ahead and roll each one of your stats. Not as good as the ones I rolled five minutes ago when I did this demo and it wasn't recording, but we'll, 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 we'll deal with it. All right, so first I will go ahead and take this 14. That'll be my dex. Uh, I'll make this uh, 13. My charisma. Eh, we'll do. We'll do 15 in charisma. We'll do 13 in strength, 12 con, and int 11, wisdom 11. All right, I'm going to go ahead and lock that in, apply ability scores. I am going to go ahead and adjust my uh, racial optional origin features i'm gonna move that one plus one i gave myself in wisdom and i'll move that over to my strength score uh, so that i can get an even number in my strength score all right uh, with that i now have my ability scores all picked out i'm gonna move into my character's description we're gonna say that this character his background is that he is a uh, he's a soldier okay uh, he is going to have uh, proficiencies as a soldier in uh, medicine uh, and survival. No, we'll do stealth. Uh, we're going to go ahead and give him uh, tool proficiencies in using dice. Or actually, you know, he'll have a tool proficiency in the playing cards. Uh, he's going to had the, the, this benefit from having his military rank he's you know he's had familiarity with other soldiers and be able to uh, gain access to places that normally you know civilian folk might not be able to access uh here are your characteristics these are basically just more for you to get an idea of how to immerse yourself and what your character's personality might be like uh, so go ahead and choose whichever ones you think. Well, you can, these are more so to keep yourself on track when in media, making decisions that your character might make. Uh, you can go ahead and choose an alignment. Of course, I'm going to pick lawful neutral. Uh, my faith is going to be, of course, the two true faiths. Uh, my lifestyle, I'm living pretty modestly. So uh, here you would type in your character's description, eyes, height, weight, age, gender, this keeps track of all those personality characteristics that you chose up here. 
and then down here you can add any notes of like organizations that you've kind of encountered along your journey any allies that you've made you can talk about your other pcs here enemies that you guys have made backstory and uh, any other things that just like miscellaneous that you want to keep track of on your character sheet you can fill those out as you want they're not going to affect uh, your character but they will help you keep track of everything that you need to keep track of on your character sheet next up equipment so uh, the best way to do this is just to click on this uh, option right here equipment you could also choose gold and then go through the item inventory you know one at a time down here and go okay i want this abacus how much does it cost okay it costs two gp and you can subtract that from your gold um but the best way i think uh, at least at, at, at first is to go to the starting equipment tab click on equipment uh, my character is going to start off with some uh chain mail he's going to have uh, two martial weapons. He's going to use. Uh, uh, he's going to use a a net, and uh, he's going to use a. Uh, uh, he's he's a hand to hand fighter. So he's also going to use. Uh, just like a, you know, I'm going to give him a great sword. Uh, he's going to have a net and a great sword. Uh, I'm also going to give him the light crossbow with the 20 bolts. I'm also going to give him a Dungeoneer's Pack. Uh, the Dungeoneer's Pack comes with all this. It's not much different from the uh, Explorer's Pack. I think one has a crowbar and one does not. Um, cool. So next up, I'm going to give him a piece of a broken banner from one of that will go into his other possessions. He's also going to get a deck of cards since he has proficiency in a deck of cards. And he has a set of common clothes and a pouch containing uh, 10 gold pieces. I'm going to add his starting equipment. All right. Now that that's done, I can actually scroll through his inventory and equip or unequip whatever it is that I would want to unequip. So I'm going to go ahead and right off the bat, I'm going to equip his chainmail and his uh, great sword. Uh, great. All right. Uh, now my character is ready. Uh, what's next? I can go ahead and view my character sheet or export it to a PDF if that's something I'm more familiar with looking at. Um, I'm going to click on this little sheet here. View character sheet. And now I can see Glade, half elf fighter, level one. Um, mm, yep. Not as good as the Glade I made five minutes ago while it wasn't recording, but uh, still pretty good. Uh, so let's say uh, we have uh, this character, and I'm like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm more of a, a light on his feet kind of a guy. Like, I don't, I don't think I need this chainmail. Um, so I'm going to go ahead, click on the chainmail. So this is worth 75 gold pieces. I'm going to go ahead and just remove that. Um, I can go ahead and give myself 75 gold pieces just to keep track of, you know, what, what I sold that for. I'll say I sold it for full value. It's a perfectly untouched set of, uh, unworn set of chain mail. Um, I'm going to go ahead and again, go to manage inventory and see about getting myself some leather armor. Um, I'm going to say I'm going to get me some studded leather armor. Uh, so here I go. I go ahead and I take some studded leather armor. I equip that. And now I have the exact same armor class uh, as I had uh, before. Well, actually, I'm, I'm a little bit uh, more squishy now than before I had the, the chainmail, but at least now, uh, let's say the chainmail is giving me like a disadvantage on stealth. I now have uh, canceled that out by swapping that out. Uh, the, let's see, this leather armor cost me um, another 45 gold pieces. So I can go to my currency and I can go to type in 45 and remove now i'm got 40 gold pieces left and i can go ahead and continue things like that as far as like buying or selling anything that i might want like i might want a potion a healing potion just to start off uh this greater healing potion uh it's probably outside of my price range um we'll say uh get, oh actually uh we can go ahead and take this greater healing potion and I'm going to go ahead and say that cost me uh, 30 gold pieces. 
So now I have a healing potion ready to go for when uh, when anything bad happens to me. I only got 10 hit points as a level 1 or 11 hit points right now. So obviously I'm a very squishy character. Um, once I you know take that 10 points, it, 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 I'm now unconscious making death saving throws. All right, so. I've made Glade, he's a level one fighter, and it's time for me to level up. We completed our first mission. So, I'm gonna go ahead back into the character sheet, and it already brings me up to the page I wanna be on, my class. It's time to level up. So, I could choose to take another level in fighter, and that'll give me action surge, which will allow me to take uh, a second action on my turn. Uh, however, instead of doing that, we're gonna go ahead and just add another class. I'm going to go ahead and say I want to become some type of spellcaster. So some of the options I have available to me, I could become a, a halfcaster, like a paladin. Let's say my character decided to join some type of church organization. I could now, you know, learn, you know, maybe multi-class in a paladin. Or let's say I'm going to go ahead and get in contact with some type of extra planar being uh, who's now going to give me spell slots. That's going to be like becoming a warlock. But I'm going to say that this character, he found something within himself. Uh, he decided, he found out that he comes from a long line, bloodline of, of, of magic users. He actually has it in his blood. So he's now a sorcerer. Uh, this is where I will go to optional feature manager again, give myself an expanded spell list, add some meta magic options, sorcerer versatility, allow me to change out some spells at fourth level, uh, and also take magical guidance, which won't, which won't come into effect till fifth level, but just turn, adding all those optional features now. Next is picking out where that magic comes from. Is it my aberrant mind, my clockwork soul, my divine soul? Uh, I'm gonna say I have a draconic bloodline somewhere in the family tree, probably on the elven side. Uh, we got some dragon blood mixed in there. Uh, my character has white, silvery hair, so I'm gonna go ahead and say he's a silver dragon uh, in the bloodline. Uh, which is nice because now he gets Dratronic Resilience, which uh, actually is going to increase uh, his maximum hit point at each level and also uh, boost his AC to 13 plus his dex modifier when he isn't wearing armor. All right. With that, I'm going to go ahead and jump onto my character sheet again. And now my armor class has actually gone up one because even though I'm still wearing armor, it will it will adjust to show what of my options will give me the highest one. So even though I'm still wearing that leather armor, it's going to show it as if I wasn't wearing armor at all. I got my plus three from dex and my plus three from unarmored uh, being this draconic blood sorcerer. So I imagine it's like silver scales growing on different patches of parts of my body. All right. So... Uh, my health has gone up to 17. Uh, let's say my DM has said, okay, hey, you guys at level 2, you guys can go ahead and add an extra feat to your character sheet. So, I'm going to go over to my character sheet, go to features and traits, click on feats, go to manage feats, and I can go ahead and add any one of these feats that I might want to add to my character sheet. So, I'm going to say I'm an athlete, so I'm going to go ahead and add athlete to my character sheet. I'm also going to give myself uh, an extra bump. Uh, we'll just we'll give my character the alert feat. It's a little bit more simple uh, for right now. So alert feat, he's going to get a plus five to initiative. So now his initiative uh, is a plus eight. It's also going to make it so that my character cannot be surprised while he is conscious and other creatures don't gain advantage on attack rolls against me as a result of being unseen by me. So that'll be great for if someone tries to assassinate me. All right. Uh, so there's a, that's a really simple way to add feats to your character sheets. Uh, now let's go into talking about spells. So my character did multi-class in a sorcerer, so I have spells to choose from. 
Um, first things first is choosing out some cantrips. Cantrips are basically spells that you can cast every single round without getting tired. It's just as easy for you to uh, cast a cantrip as it is for someone to swing a blade. Uh, so since I'm this silver dragon, which is a, like a frost type, I'm going to go ahead and take frostbite and ray of frost. Uh, I'm also going to take uh, mage hand so I can start moving some things around with my mind and uh get one more so let's go ahead and take true strike since i was a fighter to begin with it'll let me uh hit my opponents with some advantage that first round of combat all right next thing is uh, i get my spells i get two spells at this level so i'm gonna go ahead and take absorb elements and i'm gonna scroll down and uh we can actually probably add in mage armor uh is it Oh, actually, never mind. I'm not going to do some mage armor since my draconic bloodline resistance actually already gives me enough there. So I'm going to go ahead and instead take shield, which is going to give me a plus five to AC. Again, I could choose any one of these spells if I wanted to. Uh, the only downside of being a sorcerer is that once I pick them, I can't just swap them out. I have to wait for uh, a level up. Um, so, for example, I have to hit level four before I can uh, with this sorcerer versatility at level four i can swap out some of my spells unlike uh, a wizard uh, who basically gets a spell book and can swap out any of the spells that they know for spells that are uh, equipped at any time uh, well after a short rest or long rest so depending on what type of spell cast you are you might have a longer or shorter spell list um, you also uh, let's say sorcerers I'm going to go ahead and jump onto my character sheet. Let's say I get into a fight. Uh, first round, I get attacked, and I decide to use a uh, shield. I take up one of my spell slots. Next round, someone goes ahead and hits me with some type of cool magical uh, attack that's going to deal some type of uh, elemental damage. And I go, oh, great, perfect opportunity to use Absorb Elements, and I cast that. Now I've used up both my spell slots. I won't be able to get these spell slots back as a sorcerer until I take a long rest. But, let's say I was like a warlock, uh, I could actually recover my packed spell slots after just a short rest. Hope I said that right. Yeah, sorcerer, long rest, most other classes, wizard, cleric, paladin, long rest, warlocks, or short rest, spell slot recovers. Uh, so with that, that, that's pretty much the quick and dirty version of how to use D&D Beyond. Uh, again, this was done very fast, uh, in a short amount of time, but I was able to make a character, choose out my race, choose out my class, multi-class them into a different class, um, and able to adjust things on their character sheet. There are, like, special things, um, on your character sheet that, uh, your DM has approved. You can actually use the character sheet here on D&D Beyond to add those little notes. So let's say uh, you guys accomplish something and your DM's like, hey, uh, you guys are really good at that. You guys are now all, uh, you guys now have a legacy of being intimidating. Those of you who are already proficient in intimidation, go ahead and take, uh, change that to an expertise in intimidation. So now I have a plus seven. Those of you who don't, change that from not proficient to half proficient. Um, those of you who are already half proficient, change it to proficient. Um, so there's things that you can do on the D&D Beyond character sheet that keep track of things for you very quickly, um, very easily. You can reference them uh, pretty fast. Um, and then as you guys uh, get used to using this website, you can start branching into other classes that might be a little bit more complicated using some of the origins that might be a little bit more uh, you know, feat-centric. Uh, uh, so with that, I'm going to go ahead and call this video uh, complete. Um, if you have any more questions, please reach out to uh, me and we can go ahead and discuss, you know, specific uh, information that you might want to go over that was not covered in too much detail um, as we continue on to the campaign. Thank you and have a great day.